Uh, welcome back friends. In the yesterday's session I will discuss about a substitution reaction as one among the types of uh, organic reactions and in the today's session I will going to continue uh, with addition and then elimination reaction. So uh, yesterday's session I will discuss the one type of organic reaction and today we are going to finish up with uh, the remaining types of organic reaction. So without losing time, I hope you understood the yesterday's session about uh, substitution reaction and uh, you understood the mechanism of free radical substitution, then uh, nucleophilic substitution and uh, electrophilic substitution. So in the today's session, I are going to continue with the addition reaction. If you didn't understand anything about the yesterday's session, just uh, comment in the video and you can comment even in this video. Or you can take uh, my contacts uh, in the description and then you may contact me. Another way is by joining my telegram group where you can discuss with different uh, students regarding different concepts in organic chemistry. So we are going to continue. Now today we are going to discuss about addition reaction. Addition reaction. Addition reactions. So at that terminology suggests uh, addition reaction, they are types of chemical reaction or categories of chemical reaction which involve addition of a certain molecule. So we are adding uh, an atom or group of atom to a reacting molecule. That's what we call addition reaction. Normally addition reactions, they are performed by compounds containing double bond. The presence of double bond allow addition of another molecule. So if the double bond will break, that will, uh, will, will give a space for another atom to come and attach to, a, uh, to that reacting molecule. So normally addition reaction they are performed by alkene and alkyne or other uh, carboxylic I mean all other carbon compounds containing double bond. Co-presence of double bond in allow uh, formation in addition reaction. Now to examine the addition reaction is the organic reaction whereby atoms, whereby atoms or group of atoms add to carbon atom of unsaturated organic compound, of unsaturated, unsaturated. Now this one is very important. If the type of Type of organic organic reaction in which the type of organic reaction in which atom or group of atoms is added to carbon. Unsaturated. If it is unsaturated, that means it contains double or triple bond. So it is added to carbon of unsaturated organic organic compound. Unsaturated organic compound. Or small sized ring of alkane. Small sized ring of alkane resulting resulting to formation of resulting to formation of Product only. So in the addition reaction, uh, we have always we have either unsaturated, either unsaturated organic compound or small size ring of alkane. Small size ring of alkane. So uh, in the categorization of the addition reaction. They can also be categorized depending on the type of uh, 
of the reactive molecule which is added to uh, a compound. So addition reaction also they are categorized into three categories. They are categorized into three categories. We have electrophilic, then nucleophilic, and the free radical. So let's start with electrophilic. Electrophilic addition reaction, this is the addition reaction whereby an electrophile is added first to carbon atom followed by nucleophile. For example, electrophile is added first. So um, what makes the reaction to be called electrophilic? It is because electron is added first. Because in the addition reaction, normally electrophile and the nucleophile, they are added. But which reacting molecule will be added first will determine the type of addition reaction. Now, for example, if we have CH3, then CH double bond CH2 plus hydrogen bromide, hydrogen bromide to form a CH3, then CH bromine, then CH3. Now, this uh, is the example of uh, addition reaction in which here. Hydrogen and the bromide they have been added to this compound which is propane to form two bromopropane. Now, if this is the addition reaction, we have added hydrogen and bromine. But why do we call this as nucleophilic? Now, I mean, why do we call this as electrophilic? Why do we call this as electrophilic? It is because an electrophile is added first before a nucleophile. So, a nucleophile is added, but a nucleophile is added after an electrophile has already been added. Now, in order to understand this, you need to know the reaction mechanism. You need to know what is the reaction mechanism for this reaction. Now, let's say for this reaction, let's show the reaction mechanism. Now, if we have a CH3, then CH double bond CH2. And then we are adding to hydrogen bromine. This is the electrophilic addition reaction. So an electrophile should be added first. That means an hydrogen here is added to this carbon. So this bond will be electrons equal to this carbon and the electrons will be given to hydrogen. Now before hydrogen accepting the electrons from this bond, it can't accept the electrons before making the bond. So it will break the bond and then supply all of the electrons to bromine. The end product of this reaction will be the end product of this reaction will be CH3 CH then here it will be positive charge then single bond CH3 plus bromine which is negative. So this one is the end product of this reaction and it's the one which will go to start in the next step. So in the next step which is this one, bromine which is a nucleophile will be added to, to this carbon and then we will form the end product of the, the final product of the reaction which is CH3CH then bromine CH3. So the reaction mechanism suggests that the reaction it is electrophilic addition because you have added an electrophile first before a nucleophile. You have added an electrophile first before a nucleophile. So from the above mechanism which is this one, it is clear, it is clearly understood that hydrogen is an electrophile because it is a electron. So it is added first in the first step followed by bromine which is nucleophile in the second step. So this is one of the examples in which you Alkene reacted with the, uh, with, the, with the hydrogen bonded to a halogen. Hydrogen bonded to halogen. And uh, the reaction is the nucleophilic, I mean electrophilic addition. Now let's move to nucleophilic addition. Nucleophilic addition reaction. So in the nucleophilic addition reaction, nucleophile is added first before an electrophile. Nucleophile is added first before an electrophile. Now, let's see the the commonest of these uh, commonest of this reaction. They are taking place in carbonyl compound. 
In electrophilic, they are taking place in alkene and alkyne. But uh, nucleophilic addition reaction, they are common in carbon and compound. So, which are other than the ketones is how, is how we shall discuss later. So, for example, we have, uh, we have CH3 and then CH and then CHO plus a hydrogen cyanide to form CH3 then COH then cyanide cyanide then H so I, you can see these have been added to this compound to form this one this is an addition reaction but it is it nucleophilic so how the reaction is nucleophilic how the reaction is nucleophilic uh, if we are looking at the reaction mechanism the reaction mechanism is the only thing which will tell us that the reaction is is nucleophilic now uh, from here we may have hydrogen bonded to cyanide so actually uh, what happens here we can say it's bonded to Carbon then. So this first will donate electrons to carbon. Then after donating electrons to carbon, we will form a hydrogen proton plus Cn, which is a negative charge. So uh, this is what uh, can be seen. And then after that. This one will act as a nucleophile. So by acting as a nucleophile, we will make electrons with this compound. And then we will have um, Cn negative plus CH3, then HC, love and O, H. So this will donate electrons to this, cap uh, to this carbon. And this carbon cannot accept electrons until it will lose it will break other bond to donate electrons to oxygen so what we perform here at the end product it is this one will be bonded to this one so it is CH3 then it will be bonded to CH3 it will be it will C oxygen negative. He upper chip the only C N. Then he upper. He get a bond here from Malake. He may share with you. He upper hydrogen the back of the So we end up with this uh, negative, which we need to neutralize. So in order to neutralize this negative, in the next step we will have CH three. Then C O negative. C N hydrogen we will add with the hydrogen which is this one so it will be plus hydrogen this one will donate electrons to hydrogen forming the end product final product of the reaction CH3 then C uh, OH then C any hydrogen cyanide being a nucleophile is added first to a compound before hydrogen which is an electrophile so this is what we can say it is a nucleophilic addition reaction and then from there we are moving to free radical addition reaction free radical addition reaction let's see uh, how the free radical addition reaction tend to, tend to take place here in the reaction mechanism in the reaction mechanism. So free radical addition reaction, free radical addition reaction, this is the addition reaction which is brought about by free radicals, such that free radicals are added to carbon atoms. Free radicals are added to carbon atoms. A good example of this is the addition of hydrogen bromide to alkene and the presence of organic peroxide. So for example, uh, if we have CH3, then CH double CH2 plus hydrogen bromine. In the presence of organic peroxide, 
CH3, oh, oh, CH3. You, are, you get CH3, then CH2, CH2, bromine. So, presence of organic peroxide is one among the conditions which favor free radical formation, which favor homolytic bond cleavage and the free radical formation. So that's why in this reaction here, in this reaction here, the end product, the end product, I mean the reaction is free radical addition. We have added free radical because presence of organic peroxide, presence of organic peroxide favor homolytic bond cleavage. Now let's move to the to the elimination reactions. Here in the free radical addition reaction, there is no need for you to to know the mechanism of how the reaction is taking place. Maybe if there will be the name, we will discuss them in the respective topics. Uh, let's move to elimination reactions. Elimination, elimination reactions. Elimination reactions. Now, in the elimination reaction, it is an organic reaction whereby atoms or group of atoms are removed from organic compound. Atoms or group of atoms, they are removed from organic compound. And in the elimination reaction, normally, normally in the elimination reaction, it is associated with, associated with, associated with, associated with <coughs> loss, loss of atoms, and Formation of double bond. Formation of double bond. Formation of double bond. So loss of atoms is followed with formation of double bond. Formation of double bond. So if an atom are removed from an adjacent carbon atom, it results to formation of multiple bond, double or triple bond between those carbon. But if if I removed it from the same carbon, if I removed it from the same carbon, in most cases it leads to the formation of cyclic organic compound. <coughs> cyclic organic compound. So tena kona bere kona reaction such as clacking. Clacking nozo ka ukampania cyclic organic compound ya kawa straight. It is by cracking. I think what we are discussing here is, is simply by elimination reaction. Cracking, normally it's the addition or it's the uh, forced bond cleavage by using high amount of heat or electricity. Now we are saying that elimination reaction takes place under acidic or basic medium. Under acidic or basic medium. Because the acidic or basic medium, they are as reaction conditions. Reaction conditions. Uh, these are very important to remember. <coughs> they are very important to remember because uh, if we move to uh, in deep in different groups of organic compounds, then uh, you need to understand the reaction mechanism and the conditions in which different reactions are taking place. Now, if elimination reaction takes place under acidic medium, then the reaction is known as acidic induced elimination reaction. Acid, acid induced elimination elimination reaction. And also there will be base induced elimination reaction. If elimination reaction takes place in the basic medium then reaction is known as base induced elimination reaction. As how we shall see later <coughs> and the preparation of our alkene and alkyne in formation of multiple bonds, which are double bond and a triple bond, we shall see how elimination reaction takes place and different conditions which favor the occurrence of elimination reaction. So, according to the medium in which elimination reaction takes place, elimination reaction they can be divided into only two groups. This is different from other two types of reaction which are addition and substitution. So we have acid induced 
and base induced. <coughs> also, elimination reaction can be classified into two types according to what carbon from which atom are removed, namely beta elimination reaction and alpha elimination reaction. Beta and alpha. Beta and alpha elimination reaction. Now, uh, which carbon is beta carbon and which carbon is alpha carbon? So, a beta elimination reaction is elimination reaction whereby an atom or group of atoms are removed from adjacent carbon atoms resulting to formation of multiple bonds, double or triple bonds between two adjacent carbon atoms. <coughs> now, for example, uh, for example, we have we have uh, C hydrogen, hydrogen then hydrogen, C hydrogen, hydrogen, hydroxide. Uh, in presence of conch sulfuric, conch sulfuric, in the presence of conch sulfuric, this one and 170 degrees centigrade. It's better if I would love this press so that I can present my reaction well, how it happens, how the reaction happens. So in the presence of sulfuric acid and this temperature, the end product of this reaction is that this hydrogen and this one will, will be eliminated. So that will result in the formation of a double one. So in the presence of conch sulfuric acid at this temperature, we are resulting in the, in the formation of C hydrogen, hydrogen double bond, yeah? C hydrogen, uh, hydrogen plus water. Now, because atoms they have been removed from two adjacent carbon atoms, and result in the formation of multiple bond is what we call a, a beta is better elimination reaction. Elimination reaction. Better elimination reaction. We will see this reaction in the preparation of alkene, in the preparation of alkene and different methods which you can prepare alkene. Also, for example, if you want to see the base catalyzed elimination reaction, base catalyzed elimination reaction, this is the preparation of alkene Preparation of alkene from alcohol. This is alcohol. Preparation of alkene from alcohol. We have the acid induced. Acid induced. Acid induced. Preparation of alkene from alcohol. This acid helps to remove water, which is dehydration. But you can prepare alkene from haloalkane. Alkene from haloalkane. For example, in other cases, you can have a uh, Carbon then hydrogen, hydrogen, uh, hydrogen then carbon, carbon hydrogen, hydrogen then chlorine. We can, uh, we can have the strong solution, I mean it can have the concentrated solution of a strong base such as potassium dioxide or sodium dioxide. So here we have um, conco potassium dioxide or sodium dioxide in which you like. But this will result into will result into um, will result into in the presence of um, in the presence of alcohol and heat alcohol or we can say in the presence of ethanol ethanol and the heat all of these are conditions for for reactions for the organic reaction to occur. So in the presence of ethanol and the heat, this reaction. Uh, will result in the formation of uh, CH2 double bond CH2 plus. Uh, it will result in the formation of potash uh, potassium chloride and the water. Potassium chloride and water. So, this is the base duty elimination reaction in which we prepare we prepare alkene from halocarbon. Halo. We prepare alkene 
from Halo Alkane. It will kill a king from Halo Alkane. But all of these, they are better elimination reaction because we are removing molecules from adjacent, adjacent carbon atoms to form a double bond. In alpha elimination reaction, uh, alpha elimination reaction, let me allow here so that it can be easier for me to, uh, to explain the alpha elimination reaction because all of these, they are of better, better category. They are of better category. All of these reactions, they are of better category. Now in alpha, in alpha elimination reaction, in alpha elimination reaction, in the elimination reaction in which all atoms are removed from a single carbon. Are removed from a single carbon. A good example of this is hydrolysis of chloroform. Hydrolysis of chloroform or trichloromethane in other name by base to form dichlorocarbamine, which is intermediate in carbamine reaction. Carbamine reaction and the Rayman Tyman reaction. All of these reactions we will see them later. So uh, we have uh, CH then chlorine PD in presence of uh, this one and then this is the addition reaction which is uh, I mean the elimination reaction which is taking place in, in the same carbon. So what will happen here will, will result in the formation of uh, water and choline ions plus C choline 2. So it is also elimination reaction. We have eliminated a choline from the same carbon. So this uh, carbon you can apply it up to eliminate choline. Then the hydrogen end up combined and we have hydrogen end up to the water. So the end product of this reaction is what we call as dichlorocarbene. Dichloro Dichlorocarbene. Dichlorocarbene. This is the end product of a reaction. So a carbene, carbene is the neutral molecule of carbon which consists of two sigma bond and one lone pair. Two sigma bond and one lone pair. For example, here, uh, if we draw uh, carbon, you can see it is carbon chlorine, then it's chlorine. But because only two electrons of uh, carbon have been used, so in this in this molecule, we will have one lone pair in the carbon. However, this situation is abnormal for carbon, but here we will have one lone pair. Now, in terms of reaction mechanism of elimination reaction, in terms of reaction mechanism, we can also classify elimination reaction as unimolecular or bimolecular, as I will discuss in the nucleophilic substitution reaction. That some of them they are SN1 and some of them they are SN2 reaction. All of these categorizations they are very important in understanding the uh, rate of these reactions, how they can take place with either faster or slow, so that uh, are to adjust different laboratory conditions which can allow this reaction to occur faster. Now, uh, regarding reaction mechanism of elimination reaction, we may have E1 reaction and E2 reaction. In the E1, uh, E1, as we said in the substitution, nucleophilic substitution, E1 that means E means elimination and 1 means chemical kinetic order, kinetic order of the reaction. So that means it is the elimination reaction unimolecular. E1 reaction indicates elimination unimolecular reaction. Where in this reaction, rate of reaction, rate will be is equal to K, then concentration of R, keeping good. So uh, this is how we can present the rate of the E1 elimination reaction. This implies that the rate determining step of the uh, mechanism depends on the decomposition of a single molecule species, as I will discuss in the substitution reaction. And the overall pathway of the reaction is multi-step. So we have the slowest step and then we have the first step. And the reactivity of the or the uh, reaction speed will depend on the reactivity or the speed of this reaction. 
Now step one is the loss of the living group. Step one is the loss of the living group. For example, uh, it is hydrogen, then it is carbon, then it is carbon, living group. In step one, we are just losing this uh, living group. Now, for example, if we are losing this uh, living group, that means here we remain with the positive charge. And this positive charge must be neutralized. So in the first step, we will end up with the product which is hydrogen, then carbon, then carbon. Here it will be positively charged, then we will have the living group which is negatively charged. Now in the second step of the reaction, the first step is the loss of the living group to generate carbocation intermediate. And then in the second step of the reaction, we will have loss of a proton from the carbocation to form pi bond. So in the second step, we'll have loss uh, of hydrogen. Uh, we'll have hydrogen, then carbon, carbon, positive. So if there is hydrogen here, this must be lost in donating electrons to carbon so that you try this one, resulting in the formation of. So if the electrons that have been donated are to, to this carbon, that means are uh, resulting in the formation of pi bond there. So it will be no, it's not this hydrogen which will be, it is the hydrogen this one will be to release our uh, electrons here. So the bond will be formed between this carbon and this uh, will form hydrogen, then carbon, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. That is how uh, elimination reaction takes place. Here we will have formation of hydrogen which is positive charge, and this one will react to this one forming, forming hydrogen living group molecule. Now this is how SN1 reaction mechanism takes place. And the reactivity order of this SN1 uh, reaction mechanism is the same as how the reactivity order, I mean the reactivity order of this elimination reaction 1 is the same as that of SN1 reaction mechanism. And from there, uh, Example of this reaction is the reaction of alkane. Alkane to form in the presence of base to form double bond. That is basically used reaction. We gave one among the example here. One among the example we say it is uh, CH3 then it is CH2 chlorine in the presence of conch, potassium hydroxide. Uh, then here we have ethanol, ethanol and heat, ethanol and heat to form CH2 double CH2 plus potassium chloride plus water. This is uh, one among the examples of the SN1, I mean of the elimination reaction 1 in, uh, in terms of mechanism. So now let's see our elimination reaction 2 tend to take place because in this reaction, elimination reaction 2, uh, in the E2, all of the processes they are taking place at the same time in the E2 reaction uh, mechanism. Now uh, let's uh, conclude with a small discussion regarding the rearrangement reaction. Bio However, it's not one among the commonest uh, thing to be asked in the exam. So let's discuss a little about the rearrangement reaction. So rearrangement reaction or isomerism reaction is the organic reaction whereby atoms or group of atoms rearrange themselves in the molecule under influence of reagent or condition, resulting in the formation of a new compound with the same atomic composition as the original. So rearrangement in reaction, in other words, you can say it's the isomerism. We are producing uh, the new compound from the same number of atoms as the previous one. Now the new compound formed in the rearrangement reaction has the same molecular formula, same molecular formula as that of the original compound. In other words, the compound formed is an isomer of the original, is an isomer of the original compound. Hence, at the term isomerization reaction for the rearrangement reaction. Now for example, is the rearrangement of bromobutane 
to form two bromobutane under influence of anhydrous aluminium chloride. Bromobutane, uh, which is CH3, CH2, CH2 bromine, in the presence of anhydrous aluminium chloride, anhydrous aluminium chloride and 300 degrees Celsius will form CH3 CH bromine CH3 so this is just an isom of this compound but here we have the reaction condition which is anhydrous aluminium chloride and temperature of 300 degrees Celsius so this is one among the examples of the rearrangement reaction also we have uh, other categories of rearrangement reaction but uh, one thing you need to know is that uh, when rearrangement reaction give an isomer with a different functional group to the original compound then the reaction is then known as tautomerization tautomerization because uh, we call them as tautomer tautomerization tautomerization we will see how uh, this reaction in the in the proceeding topics when we will be discussing uh, one homologous series after another so we will see the tautomerization reaction how they are taking place but in the tautomerization reaction we are doing a rearrangement and then we are resulting into the molecule having different functional group from the, the original one so it is called this tautomerization reaction and the two isomeric compounds are known as tautomers are known as tautomers instead of being known isomers they are known as tautomers so when arrangement are uh, tautomers are always in equilibrium to each other in equilibrium to each other for example a thinner unsaturated alcohol with double bond can tautomerize into ethanol which is aldehyde a thinner can tautomerize into ethanol so uh, let me uh, draw how this alcohol and aldehyde can, 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 can be seen here but we will discuss this in the, in the next session I mean in the, in the discussion about alcohol so for example we have a CH2 then double bond CH OH then here is an equilibrium then CH3 CH so you can see this is what we, we, we can say that this and this one they are called is it? tautomers and not isomers tautomers because they have the same number of atoms but they have different functional groups this one is a, an aldehyde which is common in compound but this one is an alcohol containing OH, is unsaturated alcohol. So this one and this one, they are called as tautomers and they are equilibrium with each other. So it should be understood that most of the tautomerization takes place in this way, such that it involves shifting of position of hydrogen accompanied with the necessary shift of double bond. Most of the tautomerization reaction involve the shift of hydrogen and a shift of the double. So, for example, uh, this reaction you can uh, explain its mechanism when we discuss about the uh, carbon compound. And the third thing that you, the two tautomeric forms differ in their stability. The rest stable form is called the labile form. For example, in the above example, ethanol is the labile. Ethanol, which is this one, is the labile in the labile as compared with with I mean ethanol which is this one in the labile as compared with the, with ethina now uh, definition of the term tautomerization tautomerization is the type of isomerization reaction in which a compound exists in two readily intercompatible different structures leading to dynamic equilibrium tautomers they are isomers of organic compound that legally interconvert by a chemical reaction called tautomerization. Now this uh, marks the end of our discussion.
marks at the end of our discussion about the types of organic reaction and in the next session we'll start discussing about the factors affecting mechanism of organic reaction so we we'll start about the inductive effect mesomeric effect and the reactivity of, uh, of lone pair inductive effect mesomeric effect and the steric hindrance or the steric effect that will be the end of our next session thank you everybody and let me wish you nice studies